the educational rights of the women in Islam. The first guidance revealed by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, by Almighty God, to the whole of humankind in this last and final revelation of the glorious Quran, it was not to offer salah, it was not to give charity, it was not to fast, but it was ikra. It was to read, to proclaim, to repeat. And the first five verses revealed of the glorious Quran was from Surah Ikra, chapter number 96, verse number 1 to 5. He says, Ikra bismi rabbika allazi khalaq. Khalaq al insana min alaq. Ikra wa rabbuka al akram. Alladhi alamam il kalam. Allam al insana ma alam yalam. Read, recite, proclaim in the name of thy Lord who created. Who created the men from something which clings, a leech like substance. Read in the name of the Lord who is most bountiful, who taught men the use of the pen, who taught men that which he did not know. The first guidance given by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the Quran, it was to read, and it was to both male and female. Our beloved Prophet Muhammad said, it's mentioned in a Sahih Hadith of Ibn Majah, Hadith number 224, the beloved Prophet said, Ta'laqul ilm, Faridatun ala kulli Muslim. It is obligatory on every Muslim, man or woman, to acquire knowledge. The Prophet specially told the parents to educate the children, especially the daughters. It is the duty of the husband to give education to their wife, especially religious education. And if they don't, she has the right to go to the court, to the judge, and demand for it. If he cannot teach it himself, he'll have to send her and see to it that he educates her. There is a chapter in Sahih Bukhari, when one hadith, the woman, they approach the Prophet, and they tell him that you're always surrounded by men. Why don't you give us a special time? And the Prophet agreed, and he used to specially dedicate time to educate only the woman. He also sent sahabas to specially educate the women. And if you read the history of Islam, 1400 years ago, in the days of ignorance, in Yom al Jahiliya, at that time, we have examples of many women, several women who were scholars. The best example I can think is Aisha bint Abi Bakr. May Allah be pleased with her, the wife of the Prophet. And one of her very famous student, by the name of Arawa, may Allah be pleased with her, she says that I have not come across a scholar greater than Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, in learning of the Quran, in obligatory duties, in lawful and unlawful things, in literature and poetry, in Arabic history and genealogy. And when we read the seer of Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, we find out that she lived many years after the death of the Prophet, and she guided many of the Sahabas. And she even guided all the Fokhul Farashideen. Many a time, when foreign delegations came to the Prophet, and when they discussed medicine, etc., Hazrat Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her, her memory was very good. She used to memorize them. She was also an expert in mathematics. And after the demise of the Prophet, many of the Sahabas came to her, especially while dealing with Mirat, while dealing with inheritance, because she was expert in mathematics. History tells us that she has taught several scholars. She has taught no less than 88 different scholars. So in short, she was a scholar of the scholars. And only on her authority alone, there are no less than 2,210 hadith reported, only on the authority of Aisha, may Allah be pleased with her. We have the example of Umm Salma, may Allah be pleased with her, who was the wife of the Prophet. And according to Imam al Nawi, she was the most intellectual woman amongst the learned women. And according to Ibn Hajar, he calls her as an authority. 
We have the example of Safiya, may Allah be pleased with her, who was the wife of the Prophet. And Imam al Nawi calls her as an intellectual woman. We have the example of Fatima bint Qais, who was one of the Sabiya of Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. But she was so learned, and the immense knowledge she had, that once there was a discussion on the issue of fiqh, and she had a point of view, and Hazrat Aisha may Allah be pleased with her, and Hazrat Uman may Allah be pleased with him, they objected, but they could not prove her wrong. Imagine in the days of ignorance, in Yom al Jahiliya, there were several women who were scholars. At that time, people were hardly educated, and imagine we have examples of several women who were great scholars.